neuroscience, why we are complicated and why we feel conflicted sometimes, because our brain is based on three parts. The old parts that was in the mammals, which is like this, what we call the reptilian brain, and it has the survival. This is how the caveman lived, the fight or flight, the fear. And then we have the mammalian brain that came later on, when, when the human being evolved out of caveman. And it has the emotions. And this is the most important part of the brain, because it has all the emotions, and it can hijack your thinking. That's why sometimes we get angry first, and then we come down and start thinking. It can hijack. It acts like an alarm system. It withdraws all the blood from the brain and starts like having an alarm. And this is the neocortex or the new brain that has the problem solving and and the the how to, the thinking brain. But it's it takes a lot of ways and blood supply to go through. That's why it's the slowest part of the brain. That's why we get angry first. We get emotional first. And I'm like, okay, let me try to reason here. That's why our brain and each part of it has different demands and different functions, and that's why they contradict. So the basic or reptilian brain has to do with your physiology. So in order to produce better, to have better productivity, you need to care about your body. Are you drinking water? Are you eating healthy? Are you sleeping good? Are you working out? What are the routines that you do? The second part is the mammalian or the emotional part. How you think about yourself? Are you positive? Are you negative? Do you have a passion? And then the last part is the neocortex or the thinking brain. Do you have a purpose in life? Until we satisfy all this part, our productivity then will go through the roof. We'll be 12. You know, but we need to understand again the neuroscience why it happened. So now we're gonna talk why is it that way? We have two parts in the brain, conscious and subconscious. Who do you think is the most powerful part of the brain? The conscious or the subconscious? The subconscious. So the subconscious does not know the difference between negative and positive. What it hears, it prepares the, 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 the brain to do it. So if someone keeps saying, stop smoking, stop smoking, stop smoking, what do you think the brain will understand? Smoking, so it smokes more. Be because the subconscious does not understand negative. So you need to feed it what you want. If you keep saying, stop eating dessert, stop eating dessert, stop eating dessert, what it will do, it will desire dessert more because this is what you feed it. So you need to, tell, to talk to your brain in a way that you want it to act. Okay? So this is what I'm saying. The more the, con the conscious knows the difference, but it acts based on signals from the subconscious. So it, it, you hear only what you concentrate on, and that's why concentrate on what you need to do, not what you don't need to do. So that's, again, a mind shift, changing from negative to positive, because it helps yourself move forward. The habits, like I said, can be installed in 30 days. There are 10 days, 10 days, 10 days. The first 10 days, it will go down because you are disrupting your routines. So you take a while to learn something. The next 10 days, the curve starts going up, but it has still a little bit of resistance. And then the last day, you actually install the habit. And a habit means you do something that becomes automatic to you without thinking. And we can recreate them. So they are based on something in neuroscience called neuroplasticity, like I talked about before, where you can surpass the areas that are weak in your brain. And by, do, you know, the brain, do we know that the brain is like a muscle? So when we want to make our biceps stronger, what do we do? We, work, we exercise. Repetitive curls, right? That's what you do with your brain. Repetitive, intentional, you, and with intention you do repetition, it becomes part of your habits. So again, if we know the, the reason behind it, in a very simple terms, we can know how to deal with our body. It's simple, it's muscle memory, we call it. So the best way to actually go into a habit is to actually act, knowing that you're going to change a habit. Start acting like it. Not only an idea I will change, but start acting strategized to do it. Have the willpower or the commitment to do it. Be aware that this is what you're doing. Self-awareness, living in the moment, breathing, all that is important. And then journal and visualize things. So, Anne, tell me one good habit that you have. One, um, 
force myself to go to the gym or go on a hike or go to the beach when I know that, the, that I've had enough with everything else. So that way I can decompress and not turn into like this Volcano. Volcano. Tell me, <laughs> tell me one habit that you, a good habit that you, a uh, bad habit that you have. I'll, procra I'll, I'll uh, procrastinate and let things build up to get me to that point. Okay. Uh, Jessica, one good habit that you have. <laughs> no, you do. You have. <laughs> I drink a lot of water. I'm just not drinking water. Drinking water, that's a good habit. Okay, what's a bad habit that you have? Okay. David, one good habit that you have? Uh, I'm an efficient worker. And a bad habit that you have? Uh, taking it very personal. Okay. I do that too. It's, it's, it's part of And people tell you, don't take it personal. Well, I'm a person. I take it personal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You need to, again, to start. You, you know, when someone... Um, recently, I was in a, in a, in a very... Um, dysfunctional situation, if you want to call it, and someone like just attacked me out of nowhere. Someone close that all of a sudden, at that I never expected, I was like, attacked me out of, and you know, instead of saying, or instead of uh, translating every single word that that person said to me and taking it personal, I, in my mind, the more she was acting out, up or out, she, the more she was acting out, I would say in my mind, poor thing, I really feel your pain. Because unless you're so miserable, you will never lash out that way. And in my mind, I, it's my empathy that kicked in. You know, it's just like, poor thing. And it's not poor thing, it's like, poor thing. You know, just like, it's not, it, I'm not criticizing her. I'm just, and it's not negative or, or just putting her down. It's like in my mind, poor thing. You must be going through so much that you're lashing out that way. And that way, I don't take it personal anymore. I feel like, uh, if you feel that way, I'm really sorry you feel that way, but I know that it's not me. Like someone uh, calling me, for example, a zebra, right? I know I don't have stripes. I know I'm not a zebra, so it's not going to affect me. And that comes from the self-confidence. You know what I mean? The more we increase it, the more we are. Because people will hurt us. People will, do, will lash out. People, And sometimes it has nothing to do with us. You know, we, we need to realize if we have part to do with it or not. But, so, uh, so this is in instantly what I thought. But after the fact, I start thinking, is there anything in my behavior that someone else can translate that way? So I didn't take it into like, oh my God, she attacked me. No, I turned it positive. Is there anything I can learn from here? Maybe because I act this way, people that are not in the same position see this as arrogance or something when it's just me, it's my pride, it's my, maybe I can tone that down. And th this is how I can try because I used to take things, I used to cry with tears, or like <laughs> sobbing, you know, and now it's just like I try to see it from a different way. Because taking things person can really hurt us. So. Thank you, David. Uh, Curtis, one positive habit. Um, I don't really let things get to me. Good. Kind of just, it just rolls off. Good for you. I think I'm too old for it now, but just don't, you know, whatever. <laughs> One bad habit. Smoking. Yep. Okay. Bad. You have kids. Yes. Darren, one good habit. Um, I'm a good listener. Very good. That's a great, that's a great habit to have. Uh, a bad habit. Are you? Yeah, the, the, yeah. There are people that are more giving, so they give more. But do you know that in order for you to give more, yeah, you need to take care of yourself? Okay. <laughs> so, what do you think will trigger you to start taking care of yourself? Just being more committed to it. You know, being clear about where I want to be and, and changing my direction. So, so what do you think will trigger that? Will bring it? Up front and central, and central. Just make it a priority and change my focus on that. And what will help you do? You have it as a priority. I'm trying to get it. Just starting. Thank you. <laughs> so you know what? A date on your calendar. Yeah. Again, I a have, date. I had that down here Proud of you, there. Good, good. I can hold you accountable, by the way, if you want me to. So I'll be happy to.
So 